Good morning, VC. Welcome to another episode of Vinyl Finds and Discoveries, where I show you what I've acquired over the last week or so in terms of vinyl. But before we get into that, if you are new to my channel, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can continue to follow my musical obsession. It's coffee time, first of all. Okay, I want to thank Gary over at Physical Format Rock and Roll for meeting up with me yesterday, but also for this cool shirt. Edmund Fitzgerald Porter from the Great Lakes Brewing Company. He, I saw him wearing this shirt. I'm like, I need a, I need, I need that shirt, Gary. And he got me one. So thank you so much. I will be wearing this with pride. Not only do I love porters, I also like Porter Wagner too. But I also love Gordon Lightfoot and anything Gordon Lightfoot. And you can't go wrong with the epic Edmund Fitzgerald. So let me show you vinyl-wise what I've been listening to and also what I have acquired, okay? So first is, uh, this is an album that was VCLT'd by Chris Rankin. It's a thrash band called Harlot. And this is their album, Extinction. They're an Australian band. Oh my God, these guys are kick ass. If you are into thrash and you wanna hear more of an updated thrash, check out Harlot, really good stuff. Um, I picked up, uh, finally got this, Dead Boys, okay? And if you know this album, you know how good it is. This is their album, Young, Loud, and Snotty. This was recorded and released in 1977, and according to Rolling Stone, it's one of the best top 10 punk albums. Um, and I remember reading Bobby Blitz from Overkill was really influenced by the Dead Boys, so... I guess if you're into Overkill, check out Dead Boys. I mean, they don't sound like Overkill, but they influence Bobby Blitz. So that's pretty cool. So Dead Boys, punk, 70s, can't go wrong. Picked this up at Record Store Day. This was the only Record Store Day release that I picked up. Prince's album, um, The Truth. Now, what was attracting me to this is that it is pretty much acoustic. And for anybody who is into Prince, you know he doesn't really do a lot of acoustic tunes. And this is what the wax looks like. Um, but this album is. And I guess it came out as part of the Crystal Ball sessions. And I need to pick that up as well. I've never really listened to this al that album. But Prince the Truth, really good stuff. My daughter has been saying, Dad, you need Taylor Swift in your collection. Well, Rebecca, I got... Taylor Swift Evermore. Now, I also got her a copy as well. And this is cool. This is on colored vinyl. Look at that. Now, you might be cringing when you hear me say Taylor Swift. And I can understand it. She's not for everybody. But if you've ever wanted to get into her, check out this album. It's sort of like Taylor Swift music for people who don't like Taylor Swift. It's darker. It's a little bit more brooding, um, you know, not as poppy. It's more singer-songwriter. She's kind of going for a vibe and a feeling. It's almost sort of like if you take some fall leaves and you just scatter them in the wind. That's what this album sounds like. Just, I love it. Taylor Swift, Evermore. So from Taylor Swift to Poison, look what the cat dragged in. This is a Friday music release. This uh, is my favorite Poison album. And what's cool about this is they turn it into a gatefold. And the original album, I do not believe, was a gatefold. I think this, this is their heaviest record, too. I mean, Cry Tough is heavy, Play Dirty, Look What the Cat Dragged In. Um, number one, Bad Boy, Blame It On You. Yeah, it's a heavy record. Love this record. Um, I saw Poison, but not on this tour. I saw them on the Open Up and Say Ah tour with Tesla, and that was actually my first concert as a kid. Finally picked up this masterpiece, Strange Days, The Doors. I don't know what took me so long for this one, but, you know, what do we need to say about this? You know what? All I'm going to say is this, Horse Latitudes. Listen to that. If that doesn't get you moving in the morning, you've got some issues. This is one I found at the uh, Salvation Army thrift store. The Bix, how do you say his name? 
Better Becky? Peter Becky? I know, I'm so ignorant. Fix and his gang? It's basically like ragtime jazz. Please tell me how to pronounce his name. I'm just going to say Bix. Better Becky? Peter Beck? I should know that. I'm sorry. But it's basically ragtime jazz. Love it. Somebody had said to me uh, that this kind of stuff really isn't that popular because it's not cool to listen to. Like, it's not like Miles Davis or Coltrane or anything like that. But this is some really good stuff. And I found it for a buck. Sorry if I butchered that name. Yes, Tales from Topographic Oceans, my favorite Yes record. Finally picked up this masterpiece. I mean, we got lyrics on the inside. We got Roger Dean cover art. And we've got songs that are over 20 minutes long. I mean, that is just the recipe, not only for a prog record, but a recipe for success. And the last one I've been, that I purchased this week, Black Sabbath, Sabotage. Been listening to this a lot too. My favorite Sabotage record. I actually did a video on this. So if you're interested to see what the super deluxe version looks like, check out my video. Okay, but Black Sabbath, Sabotage. You've got everything on here. You've got a triple live record. You've got a Japanese seven inch. So check out my video on that. So that is what I purchased and what I've been listening to over this last week. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they call Gitchigumi. Enjoy your Wednesday.